Mental Fox here with more Fallout 76. Thank you for joining me again. Well, this is where the game decided to put us. Uh, we're looking at Slocum's Joe, and there's a group of Scorched walking around over there. They're very low level, uh, but I still really have no desire to engage them. Uh, what I do have a desire to, to do is to keep, keep walking in the direction of uh, wherever this place is that we're going to study Dr. Hudson's research. That's our current quest here. Uh, we learned that a responder scientist was developing an inoculation to protect against scorched mutations. So the work was being carried out in a laboratory at AVR Medical. And uh, somehow we know where AVR Medical is and how to get there. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Whoa, somebody has dropped a nuclear bomb right here of all places. What an interesting place to drop a bomb. Hmm. Well, uh, luckily that is not quite in my path. My path is going to take us down here, and uh, I'll probably follow this road and then maybe cut over here to the train tracks and take the train tracks over here. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. Let's uh, let's just kind of follow along this road and see if we could stay out of trouble. There's a house over there. Um, I don't know if I have food. Um, and it's been a while since I killed an opossum or some rabbits or something. I don't know. Uh, so I may be low on food. I can see my little guy's thirsty there. And I luckily have a couple swigs of something to drink. So anyway, the reason I say that is because uh, I'm wondering if maybe I should start exploring places like this house right here to see if I could find some food and some water that we're gonna need. Here is a Civil War reactor, <laughs> or reenactor, either one. I can't say I remember this. Interesting. Huh, a Civil War reenactor. Is this guy new? Well, from him, we're gonna get a plan for a Civil War era top hat. Huzzah, huzzah. And then a 50 caliber ball and a black powder pistol, which I'm not interested in. But I guess I go ahead and pick up the pistol. Um, because at the hey, very folks, least, I could learn something from guide, it, maybe. Dick Shale. Appalachia has several historical landmarks worth visiting while you're in the area. Today, I'd like to tell you about Philippi's Battlefield Cemetery, where the first land battle of the Civil War took place. Learn more about this important chapter in Appalachian history when West Virginia was still a part of Virginia. Make sure to stop by the museum to see all the authentic uniforms, weapons, and equipment actually used in the Civil War. We'll see you there. What are those things? What are these things on the ground? These cylinders. The little pieces of wood? What are these things? I don't know if I've ever noticed those before in the game. Interesting. Hmm. So, you saw there were like two red plates on the table there, and they were marked with the magnifying glass. I mean, does that mean that they have... Uh, what was it? Crystal that I needed? I think that's the only thing I have marked is crystal. I think it's crystal, right? Is that what I need to make uh, a generator? I don't remember. A blood pack. I don't think I want any of that other stuff. Well, we didn't really find ourselves much in the way of food or water. There was some cram on this table. That's pretty much it. Sugar, I mean, I never really paid too much attention to sugar in my first playthrough. Is it something that you could eat? Um, oh, well, I got a bunch of spoiled stuff here that I'm going to go ahead and just drop on the ground. Whoops. I think I accidentally ate one of those. 52 spoiled vegetables. <laughs> um, sugar. It has rads, and it's only 1% food. I'm going to drop that, too. Same thing with this bubble gum. I don't need that. I don't feel like... Okay, well, we're going to leave more stuff than we picked up in there, but that's okay. Let's get moving, man. We need to get moving. We need to... We need to see if we could find out where the Overseer went. So, um... 
you know, I'm role playing as somebody who has emerged from Vault 76. And uh, it seems as though I was the last person to emerge from Vault 76. Everybody else who was in Vault 76 has already left. And uh, those people that already left, I, kn- I do realize, are other human players in the game. Um, and that uh, I think I've gotten a couple comments from people who said that I should talk to them. Uh, because honestly, that's what you would do, right? I mean, if you had just emerged from Vault 76 and you're walking around and here you see another person with a Vault 76 jumpsuit on, uh, or heck, just another person, you're going to be like, hey, you know, looking for the overseer. Do you know where she went? And that that's the question that I would want to ask another person, you know, because I'm I'm saying that that's, that's my goal. I'm looking for the overseer. That's what I'm trying to do. Find the overseer. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like if I ran into another human player and I asked that question, um, I, I, I well, I guess I guess there's really only one way to find out what the response would be, and that would be to just go ahead and ask the question, you know, of another player. Um, but it it also seems kind of silly in a way. I mean, you know, the the other other person playing the game is just somebody playing the game you know and is he going to be like what are you talking about the overseer there's no overseer she's dead or whatever I, I really don't know how they'd respond and I really don't know why I'm walking over towards this little town um other than this is the way to the train tracks I guess this is Sutton here huh I'm just kind of kind of sticking my nose in here Anyway, um, I hesitate to talk to other players for lots of reasons. Um, one of which is because I don't think that they would be willing to play along in my role playing with me. Now that there is a place I don't want to go. There's scorched there. It's well barricaded. Uh, so I don't see any sense in risking getting into danger by going that way. So I feel like the prudent thing to do is to walk around and not go in there. See, there's a scorched standing guard right there. What's here? Oh, here's a Mr. Jangles or Jangles the Moon Monkey here. See if there's anything in this little barn that's useful. I accidentally pressed the button to take my weapon out. Uh, I don't know. I'll pick some stuff up. I might, might need some of this stuff to make a camp. But what I was really hoping for was some food and some water. I'm starting to get a little worried. Uh, maybe there's no reason to be worried. Body shop notes. I can't say I remember this. Whoa. This is a pretty long note. I don't I can't say I remember this one. It says Ugh. Why is this so hard? I thought using the traps would make it so much easier to deal with a large group of idiots all at once. I wrecked the damn vehicle though, so I can't keep doing this the same way. Anyway, it takes so much time and effort to deal with the aftermath. Yesterday I found some people looting my kills. Can you imagine the audacity? I told them that I had just barely survived the maniac that did this, and that he's been killing people in Sutton since everything went sideways. I convinced them that I am a religious person. Can you believe that, me? I know, it's a total gas. Well, I was wearing some black clothes and I had a bunch of wine, so it works. They're going to come pray with me at my church, haha. Okay, this is going a lot better than I expected. This place sucks. I'm going to put all my effort into messing with these idiots. I convinced them that they need to give up their worldly stuff because they're like actually immortal amnesiacs? I was a little altered and thinking about Captain Cosmos' deep lore, but they believed it. I can't believe how stupid people are. 
Uh, I actually think I, I don't remember that note specifically, but I do remember exploring a place where uh, somebody was pretending to be like a preacher and taking advantage of the people. And I guess that's what was is going on here in Sutton. But I do remember that from my first playthrough. A couple of people here joyriding. So if I keep walking in this direction, I'm going to end up at the train tracks, right? Some people over here at this train station, it would seem. Yeah, I think I remember that church over there. There's a plane over there, too. Let's just walk over here towards these train tracks and this train station. I mean, at the very least. We'll get some experience points for discovering this train station. And train stations don't usually have a bunch of enemies running around them, right? Don't think they do. A huh, couple level eights up there. Velia Star and Flare Zero. I'm actually not sure how to get up there. Unless I walked all the way around there and went up, maybe. Or all the way here and came back. I don't have my wonderful marsupial mutation. To help me jump higher. I just wonder what these two are up to. And I would also have to think that if you saw people, you'd also be just a little bit apprehensive. Because most people are walking around with weapons, and he looks like he's carrying a weapon there. He's got a pistol in his right hand. And he also happens to be standing around these spikes with heads on them. So, what am I to think? I mean, obviously, I know that he didn't put those heads on those stakes, because that's not something you could do in the game, but my character doesn't know that. He just sees somebody standing over there with a gun in his hand and heads on a spike. So what would you do? Well, I would turn around and walk away is what I would do and I would hope that they don't see me because as far as I can tell, he's the one who put those heads on those stakes. Might as well start harvesting more fruits and vegetables that I can let go, uh, let, let spoil in my inventory. I mean, why not, right? So, something I'm not 100% sure of, if I pick the mute fruit from that plant, can another player come up right behind me and also pick mute fruit from that plant? Or does he have to wait until the game repopulates the fruit on that plant? I don't know. So I kind of like just walking along these train tracks. Kind of dig it. Uh, remember in the last episode, I placed a camp, uh, near Mr. Fluffy, Mr. Fluffy, near, um, that first responders camp. When I logged onto the server, it told me that the game couldn't place my camp there. So my camp isn't there anymore. It doesn't really matter. Well, you can see the blast zone over there. And, uh, my character has to be like, what the hell is going on over there? Because he doesn't know what happened. He doesn't know that a nuke, nuke dr dropped over there. He doesn't know what's up. So I, I would probably be thinking, holy cow. That's a bad looking storm over there. This is kind of neat looking over here. I, I think there's a power plant down here, maybe, we're walking towards. Um... Well, I don't really see one. Oh, I guess maybe this one? It seems further away. But uh, I guess that's what I'm looking at here. What is that over there? Oh, just some rocks. 
looked like a shelter of some sort, some kind of building. So far, doing a pretty good job of avoiding baddies in this bright midday sun. Uh, maybe it's not quite midday anymore, but so far so good. Military vehicle down there, a bus over there. For a while there was a, uh, a survival mode in this game. I never played it. But um, I was just thinking of how it might actually be kind of neat if the world was like that, if the game world was like that. Because that's kind of how I'm playing. Like, I'm playing like everybody's possibly something or everything is possibly something that can kill me. And, you know, when I see other players, like when I saw those players back there, I mean, they're obviously not going to hurt me because um, the game really doesn't let them. I mean, they could try, but if I don't return fire, then nothing's really going to happen. But, um, you know, like I said, my character didn't know that he <laughs> he thought that those people could kill him. But would it be interesting if you know, if there was a survival mode and any other player could kill you with one shot, just like in real life, and you had to approach other people very, very cautiously. Now, that kind of thing would only work if you everybody was pretty much at the same level. And I think that was one of the bigger problems with um, the uh, survival mode they had here for a while, because I think that a lot of really, really high level people uh, played that uh, survival mode and pretty much just preyed on lower level people and it wasn't a fair fight I'm avoiding that uh, rad stag sometimes they charge you and there was also some bees over here too that looked like it was they were chasing the rad stag that was kind of cool to see so like even coming up on these uh train cars makes me a little apprehensive there could be somebody or something on these train cars but I'm gonna walk up and take a look hope it's not a mistake still try to stay quiet though just in case there is something or someone here they don't hear me coming look at my escape routes Going down the hill. Could hide behind those rocks, maybe. Just in case I get ambushed. Oh, there's some uh, radioactive barrels up here. I'm gonna have to walk on this side of the tracks. Huh, that was interesting, the way the shadows just changed there. A lot of train cars here. I don't like this. Oh gosh. Lots of rads. I need to give this thing a wide berth. I am curious to see if there's any goodies on it. I'm certainly not going over there. All those radioactive barrels stacked up. There's more radioactive barrels here, so I'm gonna make some space for them. Well, gunfire dead ahead. It's hard to say what it is exactly I'm hearing here. So we're going to approach somewhat cautiously. Oh, okay. So on that bridge, we've got a feral ghoul. 
couple feral ghouls. And maybe even a dog? Did I see a mongrel? Oh, uh, was that a mole rat? Rabid mole rat. Ooh, level 7 rabid mole rat. That is a lot of feral ghouls. That's a lot of feral ghouls right there. Man. So let's take a look at um, my perks here. Let's open my unopened perk pack. Don't know when I got these exactly, but here they are. Scrounger, no thanks. Slow Metabolizer, no thanks. Dromedary, no thanks. And Licensed Plumber, no thanks. Well, that sucks, but I don't want any of these. Why did June become an architect to remove the glass ceiling? Okay, we've got quite a bit of gunfire. Uh, Protectron may be fighting these uh, ghouls over here. So um, it may actually help us out. So if I can keep them from seeing me, maybe we'll let the Protectron take care of those guys. So I'm mostly interested in strength. So I'm going to get strength, but I don't want any of these cards, I don't think. Uh, so instead, um, I'm going to... Let's see, we've got... Um, Concentrated fire. I don't want that. I don't want green thumb or butcher's bounty or picklock. I don't want any of these Dromedary iron stomach. What am I in here endurance? Um, lead belly slow metal. I don't want any of these either This is in uh, charisma and Lone wanderer is something I am interested in so let's get lone wanderer because I do tend to adventure alone Okay, so I picked a Lone Wanderer card, but I upped my strength to six. So let's go ahead. Um, I can't put anything in Charisma, or can I? Let's see. Can't seem to click on any of these. So here we go. Not enough available points to equip a card for that special. So, oh, this one needs two points. <laughs> I was like, I got a point right there. So that one uses two two points. Uh, this is intelligence. I have a spot for intelligence, so I might as well go ahead and put first aid in there, even though I'm not too interested in it, really. And then uh, agility. I've got moving target up there, uh, which is fine. And um, for luck, let's just go ahead and put scrounger on there, just because I've got it. And then... Uh, I was trying to put something in this remaining endurance slot. How come I can't pick this? Um, hmm. Well, okay. Endurance, uh, I don't have, no. I have three endurance cards. Dromedary, Lead Belly, Slow Metabolizer. Um, let's do this one because I feel like some of the stuff that I'm going to need to eat might be irradiated. So let's go ahead and slap that on there too. Okay, so. I'm hoping that that protectron that we heard. Oh gosh, I'm out of water. I have no water. I don't think. Hmm. Okay, we may be in trouble here. Um, I have a little bit of dirty water. I have some boiled water. Not exactly purified water, but it might do in a pinch. So I should probably set up a camp. Um, and um, prepare some purified water. Let's get on the other side of this, uh... Well, do I want to do that? Or do I want to do it right here? Let's just, let's just plop down a... Oh. Oh crap. Oh crap. There's more than one Protectron. So let's not set up a camp here. Oh jeez. Oh gosh. Oh jeez. Oh gosh. Huh. Yep, they are on to me. Oh gosh, they are good shots too. They are apparently a lot closer to me than I realized. 
Oh. Did I see gunfire coming from the other side over here too? I guess not. What is that? Is that just a tree? It's part of a building, I guess. Huh. Well, that was scary. What's that noise I just heard? That was like, um, firecracker berries. If somebody or something's walking around over here. Get on my bat. My barbed wire bat. Oh, nice. Look at this. I was going to make a camp so that I could use a cooking station, but here's one right here. Awesome. So, I can make some, uh... Well, I can't... I can't seem to make purified water, can I? Do I not know how to make it, or do I not have the ingredients to make it? Well, I could make mute fruit juice. These all give me the same amount of water. Mute fruit juice is good for extra agility. Simple soot flower tea gives me some extra... Increases my max action points. Tarberry juice gives me a bunch of action points. And Tato juice also increases my max AP. Tato juice and simple soot flower tea are basically the same thing, but for some reason, Tato juice is more valuable. I don't know why. Um, I kind of like the idea of um, extra action points, maybe. And uh, I've got some. I got a bunch of mute fruits, so let's go ahead and just do. Some mute fruits here. Okay. So I think that's good. We can make some mutt chops here. And I can make some silk bean soup. Okay. Okay. Alright, so we just uh, stocked up on some food. So that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Um, I also want to take care of some of this radiation I picked up, so let's go ahead and use some rat away. And then, uh, let's have some mute fruit juice. Unfortunately, I have to drink a lot of it to get my health up, or my, my thirst quenching up. And then, um, sort by spoil. The squirrel on a stick, let's eat that. And we'll eat these sweet rolls. And uh, this was a nice little place to um, take a break. So we had some candles here. Nice view of the storm over there. I'm not really sure what this is or was. What is this? I don't know, man. Somebody going to make a bonfire here? Is that what this was supposed to be? I don't know. Don't see any body around here. So now I'm going in this direction. Let's um continue following these train tracks, I guess. Yeah, they take a turn in that direction. And I think that's the building I'm looking for right there, right? I'm looking right at it. I believe so. There's like a boat down there. <laughs> I'm not going to go back that way. Remember what happened to me on that side of the bridge. I got attacked by at least two Protectrons. There may have been more. Train station up ahead here. Ah, another boat over there. That's a big boat to be way out here. Kind of curious about it. junk down there. Let's go check out the boat. See if there's any goodies on it for us. Um, I'm not sure if I heard movement up there or not. I may have. Actually, now that I'm looking at the boat, how am I going to get up in the boat? I can't jump that high. I'm pretty sure I hear footsteps, right? Every once in a while? I don't think it's my footsteps I'm hearing. 
So here's how I get on the boat. Oh, this is neat. Oh man, I can't open those doors. Oh man. It's a bummer. Ooh, some snack cakes there. So, uh, Blackwater Brew, is that something that I would be interested in drinking? It's, I really never drank alcohol in my main play. This gives me extra strength and charisma, but it makes me dumb, but it does qualify as 15% water. So I think I'll pick it up. Another cooking stove here. And unfortunately, not really any goodies to be found here. Oh, except for the fact that... Can I... Aw, oh, man. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to drop down inside of the boat. That was one disappointing boat, I gotta tell you right now, man. I'm very disappointed in that boat. I'm going to walk the plank. Except for the fact that it may very well kill me if I drop off of there. Need to be careful. I don't know how far I could drop without dying. And me saying I'm playing permadeath, I don't want to die from something stupid like that. Somebody had a really good idea about how to handle death. They said that they look at dying in this game as like being knocked out or, or blacking out. That certainly works. Kind of fits in with, you know, waking up elsewhere. You could maybe think that some kind person came and found you and brought you to a safe location. And then left you. And then you come to, not knowing how you got to where you are, but knowing that you need to go back and get your stuff. Because the person or persons who was kind enough to take you to safety did not bother to bring your stuff with you. So that's an interesting way to look at death in this game, but I still kind of like my idea of permadeath. Uh, it makes me a lot more cautious. Um, if I know that I can die and then just respawn, well, that really takes away from the urgency of battles like this. I mean, you know, this is why I'm avoiding these scorched over here. If I wasn't afraid of dying, well, then I'd just march right on over there and take out those scorched, and if I died, oh well. But, uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun playing this way. Yeah, I'm gonna avoid those guys. Problem is, is there could be more of those guys right around the corner here. There could be some in this little barn here. So we're getting awfully close to AVR Medical, I think is what it's called. I hear, um, Morse code. It's one of those iBot things. I hate how he spins that thing every time I take this gun out. Responder iBot there. Oh, quest started death from above. Hmm. So somebody's gonna drop one down here now. We'll be alright. Gosh, I really don't want to go that way into the city. Morse code reconnaissance. Oh, darn it! Attention, citizens. Nuclear strike imminent. Please exit the area at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your cooperation. So I was going to ask you guys if anybody had ever decoded this Morse code that this thing beeps out, and then right then the game t was telling me what he said, and then that stupid message showed up, and I didn't get to hear the message. Map updated, Kanaw. Okay, we do not want to deal with the Grafton monster. No, sir, we do not. No, we do not. That is bad. Where the heck am I on the map? Down here. Why did Kanal Nuka Cola plant just show up on my map? Is it is it because I saw this billboard? Is that why? Because if that's the case, that's kind of cool, but it doesn't really tell me the location of the cola plant, so I don't really know why the game just now told me that I know the location of the bottling plant now. Unless that's what the responder I bought was saying, something about the... Let me see if I can get over to this thing and see if I could hear it again. Morse code, reconnaissance of designated location recommended standby to receive coordinates. 
Oh. Reconnaissance of designated location recommended? Stand by to receive coordinates. So is that what this thing did? Did it tell me about the Kanaw Nuka-Cola Nuka bottling plant? Is, is that what just happened? It's kind of interesting. I like to think that my dude learned Morse code when he was in the vault those 25 years. I don't like this, man. There's uh, too many places for enemies to hide. And we just saw a grafted monster walking around. Although I don't think the grafted monster can get up here. I think he stays down there. So, yeah, I'm actually pretty nervous right now. Explore Hornwright Industrial HQ. That's showing up for some reason. I'm going to turn this off. Explore Hornwright Industrial HQ is just simply a miscellaneous... I can't think of any reason why my character would want to risk going in there. I oh, mean, I remember this being a really, really tricky place from when I was here before. Lots of super mutants walking around Horn right here. This is a dangerous, dangerous location. And I know that because I've been here before as a different character, but uh, even not knowing that, my character knows that Areas like this are dangerous. Too many places for people to hide and jump out and shoot at you. Uh, just like this bridge is kind of a dangerous place to cross because it's a choke point, but right now I'm feeling like it's my best option. Uh, you can hear some gunfire over there. Getting a little nervous. Getting a little more than nervous. There goes the bomb. It sounds great, man. It just sounds great. I mean, really, really nicely done. Really nicely done. I'm going to turn off Explorer, the HQ thing. Like I said, I, I can't think of any reason why my character would want to go in there. feeling like this this whole place is a dangerous place man like even this medical place is going to be tough well we've discovered the charleston train yard very very slowly creeping our way towards level seven salon over there no, it doesn't look like we're being followed Well, my recording software crashed, but I think, I think I've been able to restart it and start recording again without having to exit my game. I say I think because I never really know for sure. So hopefully this is recording. Um, I, I mean, obviously I don't want to leave the game because then it would put me someplace else. And I kind of like the whole idea of trying to work my way over to this AVR medical. So, anyway, still problems with recording software, but I think we're going to be okay. Let's see if I could finish out this episode. So we've got a gurney here, petrified there, and I mean, my character has to be like, what the hell is up with this? You know, what has caused this to happen? A petrified corpse, you know? What caused that to happen? I mean, obviously I know the answer to that because I've already played the game, but my character doesn't know it. That would be a really, really, really bizarre and scary thing to see out in the world after emerging from the vaults. It's like, oh my gosh, was that a vault dweller that that happened to? Is that somebody that I knew? Is that is that something that could happen to me? Scary stuff, man. Oh crap, so we've got ourselves... Scorched over there. I don't like Scorched because they shoot at me. You know? Before I could get close enough to them, they shoot me. So 
I'm gonna try to hug the wall here. See if I could sneak up on him. He's just level one, but still. Guns hurt. Can't really tell which way he's facing. I think he's walking around the corner now. The problem is there could be a lot more around the corner, and there usually are more than one Scorched walking around, huh? And, uh, this is certainly one of those cases. Got a level, I mean, thankfully they're low level. What is up the hill there? What is that? Something glowing, maybe a firecracker berry. Oh, there's three of them. That would take us into AVR Medical Center. Here comes one right here. This one's not going to shoot at me, though. Oh, this one's kind of invisible. Okay, so far so good. Here comes another one. This one does have a weapon. Okay. So I'm trying to use my melee weapon. Because that's what I'm supposed to be using. Yeah, this Scorch was weird. He was kind of invisible. So we came here to go into AVR Medical, but I want to set up camp over here before I go in. I feel like it would be a good idea if I kind of set up a little base of operations here. Before we go in there. So that's, that's what my character is deciding to do. We're going to go up here. We're going to set up a camp. Before we go into the medical place. The ash heap region's environment is dangerous. Equip a gas mask at the first sign of toxic air. Am I really that close to the ash heap? Is this considered the ash heap? Hmm. All I wanted to do was camp out. I thought that this little flat area underneath this tree would be a nice place to do it. So, let's see if I could move my camp here. Sure can. Let's put my camp down right, right next to this tree, maybe. Okay, so my camp has been moved. I got to move it for free. Build a cook fire for your camp by going to the crafting category. I'm supposed to build a basic cooking fire and build a simple stash box, apparently. Well, let's do it. Build. Build a stash box, it's telling me. So we'll just stick it right up here. Build a little fire here. Oh man, um, kind of want to put it over here in this, uh, on these rocks, keep it away from the brush. And then I've got a bed stored. Oh, I completed a quest called Tentative Plans and I can fast travel to events from my map, which is something that I'm not going to do. I got some rewards. Um, what I'd like to do is place down a floor. Oh, silver lining. Oh, for some reason I got... Uh, a cool leather chest piece. Hmm. But anyway, I'd like to put down a floor here so that I can uh, sleep on it without getting a disease. To make a higher story building, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this should be... Did I hear movement over there? I can't place my another board there, which is too bad. But I think I'm okay. I think now, if I go to my storage stuff, I could just kind of flop down a sleeping bag here on this wood. Okay, so I put down a sleeping bag. It's just just a little home base for me here. For the time being. We don't know how many times I'm going to have to go into that building to get what I'm looking for. I mean, realistically, uh, game-wise, I only have to go in once, but from my character's point of view, I don't know, that's a big building. I might have to, like, make excursions, explore a little piece of it at a time. So I got my stash here, which is nice. I could store my junk in here. 
And then, um, I'm supposed to register for more advanced responder training somewhere. I thought that at some point I was supposed to place a generator, but that does not seem to be the case anymore. And I'm okay with that. Okay, cool. All right. So let's uh, let's lie down in the sleeping bag here in the rain. Of course, as soon as I build a camp, it rains. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to lie here. I'm going to end this episode. We come back next time. We will go into that research building and we'll start looking for Dr. Hudson's research. Hope that it leads us to wherever... wherever the overseer went. I hear something flying around and it's making me nervous. But that's okay, I'm about ready to end this game. <laughs> so it won't matter. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh crap, 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 look how many of them. Well, at least I feel rested. Oh my god, it's the stuff of nightmares. Jeez. Um. Well, they're not doing much to me. Well, this is what it's like camping in the wilderness. You've got things buzzing around you. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was horrifying. Uh, I could have ended the game right there, but I felt like it would have been cheating a little bit. So I wanted to see if I could wake up and uh, take these guys on. Plus, I get their bloatfly meat. Their delicious, sweet bloatfly meat. Oh, there was another one around here somewhere. Are you him? You're him. Okay, cool. All right. And uh, since I won't remember when I start the next episode, let's go ahead and cook this bloatfly meat right here. Gonna craft ourselves some baked bloatfly. Thanks for dinner, guys. Look how disgusting that looks. Oh my god. <laughs> that looks absolutely disgusting. <sighs> Alright. Well, thank you guys for joining me on this episode. And uh, thank you to those of you who are kind enough to leave likes and comments. I sure do appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And I sure hope you join me again for the next one. See you then.